Hey there, everybody. My name is Kenno, and welcome to MLB The Show 24 with our new Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode series. Now, if you were following before, you would have seen that I did upload a franchise mode series for MLB The Show 23 with the Toronto Blue Jays, but it was only one episode because after shortly after I recorded, I realized, hey, I'm going to have to do a lot of um, catch up in order to make it feel right. And with the new MLB The Show 24 releasing just a month after the video that I recorded, I decided, hey, why don't I just put it off, okay? I won't jump into it now. I'll wait till the MLB The Show 24 jumps uh, comes out. I'll jump on the bandwagon with all the other new content creators releasing their content for MLB The Show, and we'll have some fun, okay? So we are here with MLB The Show 24, and I'm honestly excited. I haven't played it yet. This is my first time jumping into it. I've seen a little bit of gameplay from uh, the Ant Ortiz on YouTube. If you're not uh, subscribed to him, go check him out at least. You don't have to subscribe to him, but go check him out. And then if you do like content, consider subscribing. He's, he puts out good content. It's very, very well done, okay? But here we are with the Toronto Blue Jays. I have already downloaded a roster. It's from the Live Roster Vault, live roster updated March 19th. I believe it's from iGalu. I'll add it in the description down below. I'm going to give it a shot. I, I have no judgments uh, for any roster that's that have been created. I mean, the people who have already put out rosters, kudos to them because they've gotten into this and grinded for everybody else. And they are the heroes of MLB 24. And you know what? They're also, anybody who does it for NHL or any other game like Madden, you guys are heroes when you get it done this fast. I am excited to jump into this. But as I said, we're going to be doing the Toronto Blue Jays. They're currently the sixth ranked team. So it's not, I'm not sure if it's going to be a rebuild or what it's going to be. But you know what? For as long as I've known the Blue Jays, they have just kind of been there. They haven't been the best. They haven't been the worst. I mean, the Jose Bautista years were fun as hell. I think we're coming into some more fun years now. I just want to, I, I want to exact on that. I want to get the best out of this team and out of this franchise and out of the money that we have to spend. We have $242 million to spend. And when you compare that around the league, that's one of the higher ones. That's in the top 10, if, if, if not the top six. I'm not sure if that was the ranking for it. At least we're not as bad as the Oakland Athletics. Now, I have always wanted to do a Moneyball series. We probably will be doing that if I enjoy this. It will be fun. Honestly, it will be fun. But for now, we are going to be doing the Toronto Blue Jays. Besides, I wonder how many people have done a Moneyball series. I think that's probably one of the most overdone things since the movie came out. But let's go jump in right into it. Now, when it comes to settings, I'm just going to keep it all as is, okay? We're going to keep GM contracts on. We're not going to have a fantasy draft. No, no non-active free agents. No C or we're going to keep CPU training on. But aside from that, everything's going to stay the same. Uh, I'm a little concerned about GM contracts. I mean, I am not familiar with MLB The Show in the last few years. And we're trying to go into it with a full try-hard mode, okay? So, I don't want to get fired. All it says, though, is that GM contracts are three years long and are based off your team's performance. When off, you remain with the team you select for the entirety of the mode, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if you can technically get fired. Let me know in the comments down below if that does mean that I can get my uh, tushy canned from the Blue Jays front office. But hopefully we don't. Let's try and get some results so that they don't do that. Now, because I haven't done MLB The Show in a few years, I mean, I used to play MLB The Show 19, MLB The Show 20. Uh, that was pretty much the last that I really played it. I, I want to get into the full grasp of it, okay? I know that they have upgraded scouting. I know that they've upgraded the whole draft process. I want to try and control as much of it as I possibly can. So for now, we're just going to leave everything to manual. I know that kind of seems insane, but again, this is just a setup episode. And we're just going to be starting at spring training because the regular season hasn't really even started yet. So let's jump in and take a look at our roster. All right, and right off the bat, the only thing that I will critique this game for is that the layout looks a little bland, okay? It looks a little... Uh, plane. I, I miss the field in the background. You know, when you can see like the um, selected stadium in the background, you, the neutral tones, the blue tones. I miss that stuff. Okay. That's when I first started playing. So I guess I got, uh, got a little bit of nostalgia for it, but I'm not going to bash the game just because the layout might be a little bright. That's it. I'm not going to bash the game. I've never been one to truly dunk on a game without giving it a full shot. And honestly, I usually end up enjoying games. I usually end up enjoying them just for the experience that I personally have with them. I mean, I've been playing NHL, early EA Sports NHL franchise mode series for about 14, 15, 16 years now. So if I haven't given up on that franchise, which has a lot of issues um, in and out throughout the years, then you know I don't give up on games, okay? I tend to like the games that people don't like, and I tend to like the things that people don't like. I, I, it's not that I'm a hipster or anything like that. I just like what I like. That's plainly it. And you know what? I'm excited to try and like this game. I don't think I'm going to have a problem liking it. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this franchise mode series. Now, as is tradition, 
this is going to be a setup episode. I know it's kind of weird that I'm doing two setup episodes for the same franchise mode series, but in my defense, the last one was with different rosters on an entirely different game in MLB The Show 23, okay? I'm going to keep it up just so you guys know that I practically have no experience when it comes to baseball. I only see about one or two games a year, but I still understand the metrics of it, and I'm always willing to learn. So please, in the comments down below, if you see me saying something stupid, you don't have to call me dumb. I mean, you can if you want, but you could always leave some constructive criticism so that I learn better on what to do. But let's take a look at these rosters. Now, when it comes to starting pitching, I'm not too excited about it, but I'm not I'm not too I'm not too buffed either. I don't know if that's the right word to use. We have Kevin Gosman at 90 overall, A potential at 33, so we still got about a few years left of him. He's currently our highest rated pitcher, and I think one of our highest rated players on the team, so I don't really want to move on from him unless we absolutely have to, or unless it makes complete sense for the future of this team. We have Jose Birrios, who is an 81 overall B potential at 29. That's pretty good. We have a few years of him. Chris Bassett is one I'm a little concerned about. I mean, he has that B potential. Once that drops to C, he's going to start falling. He is only an 80 overall at 35, so I do expect him to fall within the year or two. Uh, Yusei Kikuchi, we have uh, we have him 76 overall C potential at 32. Again, I'm not too... I'm not too excited about him. Alec Manoa, I really want him to grow. I'm not sure if he will. He does have that A potential at 76 with the 26, uh, with only being 26, so maybe he'll grow. Uh, past that, though, it's a little weak. We have Ricky Tiedemann, who's a 67 A potential at 21, so he is probably the best um, prospect we have when it comes to pitching. Uh, aside from that, maybe Brandon Berreria, 60 overall B potential at 20 years old, isn't too bad for me. All in all, though, I think we do want to go a little younger when it comes to pitching. That'll be one of the... Uh, one of the few year outlooks that I want to try and make, one of the few year changes that we want to try to make. And then relief pitchers, it's Chad Green, 75 overall at 32, Eric Swanson, 74 overall at 30, Yimmy Garcia, 73 overall at 33, and Tim Mesa, 71 overall at 32, with Genesis Cabrera at 70 overall at 27, with a B potential, so that's decent. And then you got Nate Pearson, who's also 66, B potential at 27, so, I mean, our relief pitching is looking bad. I'm gonna say that. I don't need uh, to be a star to know that that's not looking too good for us. And the fact that past Nate Pearson, who isn't really a decent prospect, we don't have anything, I'm a little concerned for the future of the relief pitching for the Toronto Blue Jays, but that's something that we can hopefully fix in this first three years. Closing pitchers, I don't think we need to make any moves right off the bat, and I actually don't plan on making moves right off the bat. Let me get that clear. I don't plan to completely tear this team apart and make it the way I wanted to before we even simmed any games. I don't typically do that. The only time that I've done that recently is with the most recent New York Rangers flashback franchise on NHL 20, where we're trying to get Henrik Lundqvist a Stanley Cup, and with that one, we only get probably a year, so I have to make moves. With this one, I'm going to take it slow. I want to see what the original idea and vision is for the Toronto Blue Jays while slowly peppering in my ideas throughout the first year, but not any major moves, I don't think. But again, back to closing pitchers, it's Jordan Romano, 79 overall, B potential at 30. So we got maybe one, two, three years out of him if we keep him. When it comes to catchers, this is a little promising. Danny Jansen is 80 overall, B potential at 28. That's pretty good, but we also have Alejandro Kirk, 77 overall, A potential at 25. That does make Danny Jansen expendable in the next few years, if not this year. So that's right off the bat, something we can do. But past them, it's really weak. There's just nothing there. I mean, we have Andres Sosa, who's a 34 overall, deep potential at 26. He's got to go right off the bat. First base, we do have the big one, Vlad Guerrero Jr., 90 overall, a potential at 25 years old. He is hopefully going to be an integral piece of this franchise mode series. Past that, we have Joey Votto, who I saw all the hype on Twitter when we signed him. I'm excited to see what he can do i mean he's 40 over he's 40 years old 74 overall with a potential so hopefully he holds on to that but again past them there's not much of anything i would like to add some depth to each position that we've looked at so far second base we have davis schneider 75 overall b potential at 25 so that's not too bad but again past them aside from josh kazovich there's nothing and kazovich is a 62 overall b potential at 23 so there is a slight chance that he won't become a serviceable player for us and might just be a trade piece third base we have justin turner 80 overall a potential at 39 which isn't too bad but again past him kevin biggio isn't going to be a, a main piece for us maybe a depth option and then it's miguel geraldo at 64 overall b potential at 23 and oralvis martinez 64 overall b potential at 22 so those are our best prospects when it comes to third base and that's saying something that's a little concerning for me now, I know we can't have just all A potentials and like the top of the top prospects all the time. That's going to cause bloating. It's going to cause super team issues. It's going to ca cause cap constraints. It's going to cause a whole bunch of problems we don't need to deal with. 
but I still want to add some good options for the future. I, I, I want this team to be competitive now, but I still want them to be competitive three to five years from now. I want them to be a long-term contender. But I also understand it's not much like the NHL where some of those NHL teams can go on like, I think the, the one of the longest ones was like an 18 year streak of making the playoffs every year and being a contending team. I think that was the Detroit Red Wings. They were crazy. And I don't know if that's the case for a lot of MLB teams. I feel like sometimes you'll have a great year and the next year you'll be seeing them rebuild. I mean, look at the Blue Jays a few years ago. They did that same kind of thing where they were great and then they just weren't. They just couldn't do it anymore. So I don't know, but I want to try and can create a long-term contender with this team. But let's get back to the roster and we have Bo Bichette at shortstop, 89 overall, A potential at 26. Again, somebody I planned to keep on this for a long time. Past him, it's just Arjun Namala, 62 overall, B potential at 18. He has a high chance of becoming a serviceable player. I don't plan to move him unless it makes absolute sense for the future of this team. But again, between them, there's no depth and that's a little concerning for me. Left fielders, we have Dalton Varsho, 27 years old with 79 overall and a B potential. I mean, again, past that, nothing. Center fielders, it's Kevin Kiermeyer, 79 overall, B potential at 33, and then no prospects past that. And finally, for right fielders, we have George Springer as our top option, 82 overall, B potential at 34 years old, and past that, there's not really much of anything. And that, again, just circles back to the point that this team lacks major depth and prospects. Now, one of the reasons that this is an episode zero and that we won't be doing anything actually momentous in this episode is because I don't know what players are missing. Uh, personally, I think that there's a few players missing or maybe a few overalls or potentials that aren't right. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below who you think absolutely needs to be in this. If I don't see any comments, I'm just gonna go with the status quo. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research myself, but I am running a little thin on time because I'm recording for two different channels. I now have a new full full-time job. I have a family to take care of. And I'm recording three different series on one, four different series now with the MLB The Show being added on one channel alone. So my recording time, my editing time and everything like that is all eaten up. When I have time to edit rosters, it's usually when I'm sick or when I'm depriving myself of sleep. So if you guys see anybody that you absolutely think needs to be edited, let me know and I will do it. If not, then I will go forward as is. But as you see, I've been hovering over this position rankings based on the 30 MLB teams around the league. And what I'm seeing right off the bat is that we only have three strengths and they're not really the best strengths. We have shortstop, first base, and right field all in the top 10. Past that, everything's middling, if not low middling. And then we have second base and our closing pitchers and relief pitchers as the weakest parts of our team. Now, let's context this with the fact that we do have some top 10 abilities on our team, such as our shortstop, first base, and right field. They're all five, six, and ninth. That's pretty good. But everything else is not that bad, okay? It's higher middling, lower middling, okay? It's 12th, 15th, 12th, 12th, 16th, 21st, and 22nd. That's not terrible. I, we could be seeing things that are like 21st and below, 22nd and below, but we have some strengths on this team. It just matters on what we have to build this team with and what uh, trade chips we have to possibly make any moves. And then finally, I'm gonna take a look around the free agent market to see what we can possibly add to this team that is decent. I'm not sure there's gonna be anything though. But right off the bat, we have Jordan Montgomery, who I believe did play for the Blue Jays, so we could bring him back. He's 84 overall, 31 years old. That'd be a decent second option past Kevin Gosman. There's also Bryant Trowbridge, who's a C potential 73 overall at 23, so he could still grow. There's, It's not a, a no for sure. But past that, there weren't any other prospects or players that I was really considering bringing on. So let's look at the relief pitchers. Now, relief were already weak, and it doesn't look like there's going to be any help here. I mean, Jose Cis Cisnero, Cis Cisnero, I don't know how to say that. Aaron Loop, uh, Brad Boxberger, they're the best ones here. Jimmy Nelson as well. They're all in their mid-30s, and I don't think they'd be helpful to our team. And then past that, there's no real prospects that we can bring on to strengthen the team that aren't better than a C potential. So I'm not going to be looking at prospects for relief pitchers. Unfortunately, if we want to strengthen our relief pitching, we're going to have to do it via the trade market. When it comes to closing pitchers, this is Brad Hand and uh, Mark Melanchon or Malcolm Melanchon. I don't know. I I'm going to butcher some names because I'm not familiar with them. But there's nothing here uh, even past that for prospects. I mean, Crew Baker and Charlie Reyes are both C potential. Same with Frank Crow. Frank Crow. We could bring them in. Um, I think they would just be trade pieces um, for literally nothing. 
There's really nothing available at the catching position either. Eric Osberg just wouldn't be an addition for us. And honestly, we have a strength at catching with Danny Jansen and Alejandro Kirk. So I don't think we need to add here. When it comes to first base, again, we have a bit of a strength. I'm not looking to add anything. And I, I haven't taken a look yet, but I doubt that there's any prospects that are definitely going to jump off. I mean, the highest, the youngest player that I've seen so far is Daniel Gonzalez at 49 overall. So I'm doubting that he has a potential and is going to become a superstar for us. Second base, we have Jonathan Shop and Luis Alvarez Jr. I think that's how you pronounce it. But there's not really anything to uh, jump at here. Uh, I don't know if there's any pro prospects, but I'll take a look in between videos. And again, we are pretty okay at second base with David Schneider and Santiago Espinal. I still want to add. There's definitely no doubt that I want to add, but it's looking very apparent that it's not going to be through free agency. Same can be said for third base. It's Evan Longoria and then nothing really past that. Shortstop, Adalberto Mondesi doesn't look too great. We have Bo Bichette. I don't think we need to make any moves here. Now, left field, there is JD Martinez. We could look at offering him a contract and just getting that big hitter. Uh, you guys let me know. I wouldn't, I don't have a problem with bringing down JD Martinez. I think his power right and power left are great. He has decent contact as well. Good clutch. I mean, I got no problem with bringing him in. You guys just let me know in the comments down below. Center fielders, there's nothing, nothing that I'm, I'm jumping at. And finally, a player that I'm looking to sign. I'm actually, I'm intrigued to sign is Javier Colon. He is a B potential 76 overall at 27 years old. So not that much room to grow, but still some decent room to grow and possibly be uh, a good piece for us in a few years, if not a trade chip. It's shocking seeing Austin Meadows down here because I remember he was like a big, uh, a big prospect a few years ago that was like always going to be a superstar, but now he's 63 at 28. So I don't know if maybe he's rated wrong. I'm not sure, but yeah, no, there's nothing here for us. But that is going to wrap it up here. As I said, this is just a setup episode. It's probably a bit of a longer one but I'm excited to get started, okay? We are officially gonna be starting. I'm gonna be doing probably two uploads a week of this series, so make sure to keep uh, notifications on if you are subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so that you keep up to date with this. We're gonna explore MLB The Show 24 together. We're gonna have some fun doing this. Maybe I'll do two modes. Maybe we'll do a Blue Jays and the Moneyball series because everyone does it, and I feel like I'd be wrong if I didn't do it. It feels like a code of conduct for all sports content creators that play MLB The Show. But thank you guys so much for joining me. As I said, multiple times throughout this video please leave comments down below on players you think should be edited uh tell me the exact editing you know what i'm a, a sponge i'm willing to absorb any information you guys give me if you want to have some fun let me have some fun with you we are going to have a fun time a great time doing this franchise mode series and i just want you guys to enjoy the content that i'm putting out so if you have some ideas let me know if you want to see it done a certain way if you want me to play games then let me know i've never actually played mlb the show for like six years now so I don't know, but thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been a good setup episode. I'm excited to see what we can do. And I will see you all in the next video as we start making some moves with this team. I think, unfortunately, I have to make some minor moves to get started if I want any chance of contending for this team. But that's just my two cents. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. If you like this video please leave a like down below and let's know what type of content you want to see more if you really like it then why not consider subscribing you can do it on a 30-day free trial basis and if you don't like it after 30 days you can unsubscribe again free of charge and i mean it's free of charge either way but this is just a little uh, skit that i've been doing at the end of each video and i kind of find it fun i don't know about you guys but thank you guys so much for joining me this has been a blast and i'll see you guys in the next one